Son of Fire from Zion Company, Spirit School. These teachings you are listening to is designed to propel you, to bless you. Enjoy and please subscribe. Thank you. Father, we just want to glorify and magnify your incredible name. Standing before you, Father, literally shifting into the atmosphere of your kingdom. Standing in that realm, Father, where we see you face to face. Where we begin to understand who you truly are. As we live in all of who you are. Uh, being overshadowed by your glory and your fire. Being overshadowed of spirit beings by that, that, that ancient path that we walked in, Father. Beginning to receive the revelation that we used to carry. Understanding the insight, Father. The knowledge we had of each one of the seven spirits. The knowledge we carry of the saints of old. Father, we are excited to begin to understand the things that we walk in as we live and move and have our being in you. But in the same breath, Father, we come out of the faces of Yahweh, the fullness of what you have desired for us to move into the atmosphere of the earth with understanding legislation, speak as an oracle, work as a king, stand as a priest, knowing my position as a son. And so, Father, slowly but surely, there is so much mystery being revealed and released to the sons. So much of the secrets of the heavens is given to us, Father. We are coming into the atmosphere as sons, breathing the breath that's full of your glory, full of your fire, full of your presence into the atmosphere of the earth. And it is changing all things, Father. It is reigniting and reestablishing your presence and your image in all things that we touch. And slowly but surely we'll begin to unfold what, what creation needs as we go deeper and deeper in revelation with you. Father, as you teach us how to govern, as we begin to understand who we truly are, things will change and things will begin to fall in to the blueprints that you've given us. So I ask for wisdom for us, Father God. Let the sons and daughters begin to understand the things that we need to have understanding of. Let's begin to have revelation of the things that we need to have revelation of for right now. Let's live in that realm. Let's understand the level of intimacy that you desire with us. And let's walk it out. Father, we love you. We praise you. We thank you, my King. You are majestic. You are beautiful. In the name of Yeshua. Amen. Okay. Um, uh, something really shifted in me the other, the other day. Matter of fact, it was just something small and it's, it was so strange for me because it's not something that's, that I've experienced in a very long time. So uh, last week, Monday, I went to the Monday class, which is in uh, Baton Rouge. But we had, um, it was Labor Day, so we had a barbecue at um, someone's house. And it was good. It was a great meeting. I taught on one of the living letters. And afterwards, um, the lady felt that she had an assignment and they needed to lay hands on me and pray with me and pray for me. It was really nice. I haven't had that done in many, many years. But uh, something they said, one lady said, and it was really exciting to me. And if you heard some of my messages, you understand why. Because I was given a mantle, a warrior mantle. Now, the first time I ever received a mantle, it was a mantle of love. And I was thinking to myself, oh, <laughs> Jesus, really? Seriously? Look at me. You know, I don't know if I think or project the mantle of love to be part of my character, you know. But eventually Yahweh explained and expressed to me what love means and it changed my life. Then um, I was in a process where Yahweh was revealing some new things to me and he was saying that I need to add two, two um, mantles to you and the saints that have uh, these mantles want to hand it over to you. But, but, but I want you to, and I knew it in my heart, he didn't have to say it, I needed to trade something for it and it was strange because i knew in my heart i needed to trade love the mantle of love and i didn't want to i was already lived in it for like five or six years and i was thinking ah no <laughs> and i want the other it was it was uh, fire and intimacy it was the two mantles that i wanted combined with why i wanted it and eventually I, I realized and i forgot about it but i realized that whatever you lay before the feet of the father he multiplies back to you you know, he doesn't take it and say, okay, well, thank you. Now I'm going to give you something less. He, he always gives more. He always projects a greater dimension of his glory to you. And I remember as I decided in my heart to trade the mantle of love, he gave back to me um, one mantle, but it had all three elements in it. You know, and it changed my life. And it's taken me to a deeper place. It opened up the nation of revelation. And ever since Monday, I've had this bubbling inside of me, this weird excitement you know because i've already no one asked me to lay anything down but it was just a reaction in my spirit to take those the mantle i have on my shoulder and to lay it down knowing already that yahweh will never just take it without multiplying it back to me so the mantle given to me on monday 
combined with the mantle that I had on, it changes everything about who I am, you know, and it's gotten me a whole new place in the spirit, and it just feels really good, you know, and I'm excited about the things. I think Yahweh is really shifting us to a deeper place, and I think maybe that's one of the reasons why I wanna I teach what I'm teaching tonight. I've teached it many times, and I, I, I've looked, I did not teach it yet yet, but it's very basic, and it's very simple, and it's really just something we need to engage. It's, a, it's how to grow your spirit, but, but it's little things that we forget. You know, I mean, I find myself sometimes really struggling with things, and then I have to speak it out, um, so that I speak it out in the way of doing it, because I don't find my spirit doesn't quite want to do the things that I feel in my heart needs to be done, so I'll speak it out by faith, so my spirit has like a, 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 a route to go onto, if that makes sense. If that makes sense. Okay, so what I'm going to try and do tonight is I'm going to try and get us to understand how to truly grow your spirit and how to see in the spirit. Now, there's very basic things, uh, there's basic facts that we need to understand. For example, there is only one place where you perceive or see, and that is inside your brain, right? Your imagination is your sight pattern. Um, and that's something we have to understand. Y'all aren't making this stuff up. No, you're not making it up. Your spirit man, which is glorified and has an ancient path. We did this last week. And it has a capacity and revelation that if you let your soul perceive the things your, your spirit man is showing you, you will see in the spirit. Right? Because the images your spirit man releases to you is reflecting that which it's done that which it's seen, that where your spirit is at, the things your spirit man is doing, right? And so we might reject the things we can't perceive. So your spirit is showing you all these pictures, but you're rejecting like 90% of it, and the things you maintain is things you perceived. That's why I always say, well, you have to go back into every engagement so that you cannot so you don't have to perceive the things you previously could perceive, but you can begin to engage the things that you rejected because you can't perceive it or understand it. Right, that's the idea of it. So know that whatever Yahweh is revealing to you is happening on the inside of you. Yeah. You know, for example, we this is logic, but if I look at you, I look at you from the inside of me. So in essence, you're actually inside of me. <laughs> She's gonna wait. <laughs> Everybody includes Jesus, see from one place, one screen, and that's your brain. So there's an activation that needs to take place inside of you. That's why <clears throat> It's, it's important for you to read the word as much as listen to the word. If I listen to the word on an audio tape, well, audio tape, how old are you, Gustav? <laughs> uh, on whatever you call it today, right? Um, if I listen to an audio of the word of God, it's, it's my spirit engaging it. If I read it, my brain and my soul has to be actively involved in what I'm reading. Right, that's why it's a good idea to not just listen to the word, but to read and study and meditate it, because that's going to go into your soul. Right, right? so that's a transformation. But the idea, and I think it's Ian that says that uh, he talks about like three or, or six billion images that comes into your mind every second, and your body or your being would reject um, all of it until about two thousand images that you can perceive or understand, and then out of those two thousand, you'll probably hold on. Uh, on a handful of images, because you will only hold on to what you can perceive or believe in. And of course, the idea of my spirit man is to change my belief system, to change the things I believe in so I can expand who I am and what Yahweh wants to reveal to me. That's the idea of, of knowing that whatever I'm looking at is taking place on the inside of me, or is a, is a reflection of what Yahweh wants me to walk in regarding what my spirit man is showing. So my spirit's coming out of the atmosphere of the kingdom of heaven, and it reflects an image inside of me through my brain, which my soul looks at and either then rejects or receives. Now, as I take my soul through transformation, it receives more of what my spirit brings than what it would if I do not constantly overshadow my spirit, or my soul. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Images, natural and spiritual, are perceived from one screen, right? And that's why I cannot reject things I engage. So, for example, I've seen some really strange things and I don't want to talk about it because it makes no sense. But as I sit in a secret, I sit in that mystery before, I don't have to express myself to anybody or talk about anything because as soon as I, as I talk about it and I don't believe what I'm seeing, it's like I nullify what was revealed. But if I sit in that mystery and still I have a revelation of it and I speak of it then, it expands it and it begins to grow into something that Yahweh wanted it to be. So it's more than just... just rejecting something it's holding it in until you can have understanding of it and you don't have to ask anybody you can just sit in that mystery and Yahweh will unveil it for you 
That's why I love in that time where I'm sitting with an image or a vision that I don't perceive, instead of asking for an interpretation, it's a much better idea to sit in it, in the spirit realm, and wait on an answer, to wait on something that Yahweh brings. And it, could be, it could happen through someone sharing something. It could happen through you reading the Bible or engaging in prayer or just spending time worshiping Yahweh. It opens up. It always does. It's almost like His promise, right? You, your brain, only perceives, stores, validates what you train it to validate. That's why it's important to, to study the Word. Matter of fact, I have noticed in my understanding of uh, Ezekiel, uh, the whole book of Ezekiel. It's incredible. Because it's a supernatural book. You know, even if you look at the Revelation, just to read the Revelation and to engage with these incredible visions and uh, engagement that these men had, even if you read the book of Enoch, just going through the stuff that they've seen, it creates new levels of sight to your spirit because now you have a greater vocabulary of what spiritual revelation can be. It's like it opens you up and then your spirit starts revealing things to you because it's a gate that's open for you because you're in it. And it begins to unfold in your, your perception, in your mind, the things that you need to know and walk in for the time you're in, which is really cool, right? Yes. Believing is a requirement to seeing. You will only see what you believe or what you value. That is, that is probably one of the most important things. That's why I've noticed in my own life, I have to, like for example, I'm sitting in my lounge that one day and all of a sudden this fiery gate, but not like a living ladder, just a, a fiery gate almost like takes place over my door in my room, in my house. So the, the outside of the door starts burning with a massive flames and I'm looking at it. But instead of immediately engaging it, I was like, hey. so I just got up and I sat outside with my wife and I just kind of lost it, left it and forgot about it. Only the next day, Yahweh almost like rebuked me regarding it because they showed me again. And while I was engaging with uh, Apostle Craig, we were having a meeting, um, Yahweh kept on projecting me and wanting me to go back to the door to go stand there and feel what this gateway was all about. Why did it open up? And uh, I think I might have shared it with you guys before, but as I was sitting in it, the mystery became a reality and Yahweh showed me that he opened up this doorway and gateway for me so that I can, through my soul, perceive what my spirit's doing. As I enter or go through this door, it immediately takes my spirit into the spirit world where it works, when it does what needs to be done, and my soul will go on to its natural day or normal day, but it will be a connection, and every time I wanted to know what my spirit man is doing, there will be a download because of this gate. <coughs> But it's something that I could reject very easily because it's so strange. It's so different. I mean, why would that even make any sense to anybody? And, and it's weird. And the Father said other things to me. For example, He said, every time you see or perceive something in the Spirit, stop what you're doing and go there. You know, so for example, I'm working outside and all of a sudden I see in the blink of my eye a movement in the middle of the road. Now, I stay on a, on a corner on a cul-de-sac, so it's pretty safe, but... I see something move, and he always says, I want you to go stand there, there's a porthole. So there was an angelic being that was ascended, or was working, or walking through there, or doing something. And immediately I went there, and I stood there, and I just started worshiping, engaging. And the Father started showing me how these gateways work. And I could reject that, because it's not something I can perceive in my soul, or my natural understanding. But my spirit, because it overshadows my soul and my body, had the leadership to take me there and have me engage it. And so that changes my belief system, it changes my perception. It is required for you to truly begin to see and walk in what Yahweh has for you, right? Yes. Then very important, seeing in the Spirit is a choice, not a gift. Right? <laughs> That's a very, very important fact. It's not for some, it's for everybody. Amen. Right. So you don't say, oh, well, I can't see it because it's not God's will for me. No, it's God's will for you, of course. What type of father's will is for his son or his daughter not to see you know, it doesn't make any sense. You know, I mean, I, I relate my entire life to myself as a father and my children. And I don't make any sense. My walk with Yahweh. So if I do something really stupid, I immediately relate it to what I would have done if one of my children did it. And always, every single time, it's like, man, it would have been over before it even started. You know, they would have been disciplined. But I wouldn't have loved him any less. I wouldn't have cared for him any less. I wouldn't have separated myself from him. As a matter of fact, I would probably want to spend more time with him because I would realize because of his action it must mean that I haven't spent enough time with him. So as a father, my instant reaction is, well, I love you so much and I don't want you to engage in what you did again. So I would rather spend more time with you to change your perception about certain things. 
But of course, I can want that, and if he doesn't choose to spend time with me, I can't force him. But that's not the Father's heart. So it must always come from the Son. It must always be that the Son's desire to want to go to a deeper place. So it's not a gift, it's a choice. I choose to want to see. And if I choose to want to see, I have to practice. You know, I have to practice. I have to constantly fight myself going in. Oh, but I can't see. Well, shut up and keep trying. Exactly. Well, I'm trying, but it's not working. Well, keep trying because you're just not trying hard enough. You know, if it works for me and it works for everybody else, then it has to work for you. Maybe you don't understand it. Maybe you engage it more. Maybe you ask some questions. Maybe you see what Yahweh truly has for you. Maybe you understand what you're seeing, but you don't know what you're seeing is actually an engagement, you know. And just because of what we are bound to, it's always to the law of first mention. Now, my understanding of the law of first mention is there's many aspects to it. Because I can study the word, and then if I need revelation, I can go to the law of first mention. So wherever that which I study is heard of or talked of first, I can go back to, so I can have the revelation of what he's actually talking about here. Yeah. But in the same breath, each of us have heard something of the gospel in some way, fashion, or form in our previous engagements with Yahweh. So I'm bound by what they taught me. So if anybody wants to teach me something else, I'm bound by that law that first taught me. And so I might reject what I'm, be, what I'm taught now because it's so different. Mm -hmm. That's why I have to kind of get rid of that bondage, if that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. Exciting, right? Yes. And the Lord God formed man and of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Now I love this because we understand we are the only created being that Yahweh formed. Right? Everything else was spoken into place. Now, he spoke us into place. It was the very first thing he did. Let us create man in our image, right? But then there's more to us than just spirit. So he framed the body and he breathed into this body, which wasn't even the body that we have today. It was a glorified body out of the gold dust, the glory that comes from Yahweh when he comes out of the, the, the mountain of, 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 of God, right? The mountain, Mount Zion. So it's just understanding who we truly are, understanding what it means to be a living being, understanding what Yahweh is projecting here is a dimension of you that is distorted now, but a place that Yahweh needs you to return back to. And that is constantly finding yourself going deeper, deeper, and deeper, so that who you were meant to be from the very beginning can come into full fruition, right? And I'm not meant to look like Adam, I'm meant to look like Yeshua in his full glory. And Yahweh's desire for us is to, of course, push in with that as hard as we can. So to grow your spirit, there's certain things that you physically have to do, right? It's just logic. But it's also the way in which we do it. Because everything we were taught to do up to this point, uh, when I talk about old school church, needs to change, right? I say, I don't pray like I used to. I don't fast like I used to. I don't worship like I used to. I don't do anything like I used to. The only thing I still do the same and not even is praying tongues. Except now I pray in tongues with understanding. I don't say, well, that's not possible. No, it is possible. Because when you focus on what your spirit is releasing, when your soul is connected to that realm, there's a revelation that comes to every frequency that comes out of your spirit, man. Right? Yes. So one of the first things that needs to be done is the importance um, of, of, of my spirit life. Uh, the issue of meditating. Now this is something that we don't understand or something that we do in a measure because we were taught, I take a scripture and I just meditate over it, go over and over again. But meditation uh, is really key because we understand the word says that, that man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So out of that context, we immediately go to the word and we want to read and study the word and take what the word says and meditate on it. It sounds like a good idea, but I think the idea that Yahweh has here really is to sit in a place where my soul... Now, my body doesn't have to move, my body doesn't have to be active per se, but my soul and my spirit can go into the kingdom of heaven and run with a train of thought. So my spirit will reveal to my soul certain things as I meditate on what Yahweh is pouring into me and take me on a journey. That journey becomes an engagement. The engagement becomes a place where I walk with Yahweh within the kingdom of heaven where he reveals to me the mysteries and the secrets. It's his desire in this place to enhance me and to propel me, right? It carries on and says, here I am. It's uh, Psalm 40. Uh, I have come. In the scroll of the book, it is written about me. I love that. It's Yahweh just saying, can you understand that I am in this full capacity waiting for you to engage me? Then, then I said, here I am. Sorry, wait, wait. Just as he chose us in the Messiah before the foundation of the creation of the universe to be holy and blameless in his presence, 
Yahweh's desire for us is to begin to understand what it means to engage Him. If I am created and designed to be set apart and pure, then what does it mean to be pure? It's not a do-do list. It's not the things that I, that I need, to, need to pay attention to because if I constantly find myself focusing on the things I do right or wrong, I'm eating on the wrong tree. So it's just Yahweh saying, if you need to be meditating on my word, understand the value of my word. And also understand that there's dimensions of my word that you have not engaged yet. And we're looking at the spoken that's in the atmosphere of the earth, the atmosphere of God and the kingdom of heaven in every area that, that we have not engaged yet. Right? We have the word spoken in the cosmos that we haven't gone yet. You know, of course, we have so much revelation out there because the word of Yahweh will not return void which means it will continue going and breaking through dimensions, realms, atmospheres until we get it to receive it because it's spoken before our time. But as spirit beings, I have the capacity to go into the realm that it's been spoken and to receive it. I don't know if that makes any sense to you all. I love this part of the word. It says, well, we've read it a million times and we probably still don't really understand it. It says, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, and no, and no mind has imagined the things that God has prepared for those who love him. Now this that's part of my engagement is I is sometimes we go into the spirit realm and we see things and experience things, but really we have no record or trace for it. And then that's that's the most part of what we reject. That's the things that we kick out and say, Well, I don't know what you're saying, I don't understand it, I'm out of here. You know, but it's a place that Yahweh wants to call us to so that we can sit in that place and engage the mystery until it unfolds to us. So it's by faith that I sit there, it's by faith that I receive it, but it's knowing that I'm in the truth. That's why I worship Him in spirit and in truth. I'm sitting in Him. I'm closed in Him. When I'm in Him, there's no deception. There's no deceit. Now, we don't know no deception and no deceit because of our uh, the thoughts and intent of our heart. But Yahweh is cleansing a company of people to a measure that they've never been cleaned before. He's taking a company of people to a place of holiness where we begin to understand the scripture that says to the pure all things are pure. Yes. Because there's a, 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 a trace um, a, a, a record in my DNA that's been completely removed the deeper I go into the things of Yahweh which is of course connected to sin I hope that makes any sense another key that we need to look at to build a strong spirit is, is worship now I love worship but I've never been someone that can sing and I've noticed that when I do try and sing I get a headache oh that's demonic brother yeah, it could be demonic but but it's not just it's something I, I've never practiced. You know, when you sing, you, your whole being is opened up. You know, you sing from, from your stomach out. And uh, I, I just could never really do it very well. And so when I worship, it's a great time for me. And I, I really, I was taught by, I guess, the best worshipers in my country. You know, when I look at the churches that I went to, it was really phenomenal, powerful. And so it was all about just engaging with Yahweh and opening up your hands and singing and, and jumping and clapping as a young person and the youth and doing all these things. And that was seen as worship. But we now beginning to understand that I cannot even worship Him unless I'm in the Spirit. And I think it's uh, John. It says, God is Spirit and they that worship Him must, not could, would or should, must worship Him in Spirit and in truth. Now, I can never understand that scripture because I could never go into the Spirit. You know, my understanding of the Spirit was, well, when I go, then I'm in the Spirit, because well, I'm praying in the Spirit. You know, but really, now that I'm a Spirit being connected to the fullness of who Yahweh is in the Kingdom of Heaven, I begin to understand what it means to worship Him in Spirit. So when I step into the Spirit realm <coughs> and understand that I'm seated in Christ, that's my, my position as in the truth. Because I'm seated in Him. It's my place of rest in Him. And from out of that place, I begin to understand. Now, in the same breath, the place that I'm seated in is the spirit realm. And it's from that place that everything I do is worship unto the Father. I do not have to worship Him with my hands raised. I'm not sitting there going to His feet. Oh, I love you, I love you. You're beautiful, wonderful, awesome God. And that's the truth and that's what He is. But I'm engaging what He's putting in front of me. I am engaging what he shows me. I'm sitting in the mystery. I'm allowing him to open up the gateways and the doorways because everything that he reveals to me, everything he brings to me, he shows me to propel me and bless me, to increase me, to teach me, to reveal to me what needs to be known regarding who he is so that I can go to a deeper place in him. Because my people die because of a lack of knowledge, so my people live with a greater level of knowledge. There's a dimension of life that comes to you uh, as you gain knowledge of who he is. So in worship, and it's not worship like there's a great music playing, 
don't know if you guys noticed, uh, there's not a lot of mature worship leaders out there. Now, it sounds, sounds really bad, but this is not their fault. Because what happens is, I come, I get born again and I can sing. Well, I, I, was a, I was a musician before I got born again. Now I get born again. And the immediate thing the church does is, well, he can sing. Let's put him on the worship team. Right? He starts writing all these songs and becomes famous and does great. So he becomes the youth leader or the, the, the worship leader because he's got this talent. But he's got no level of revelation. He's got no understanding of who Yahweh truly is. He carries a gift. And Yahweh kind of looks for a little bit more than that. Now, I'm not saying that that is wrong and it's something we shouldn't do. I'm just saying when you lead someone into a dimension of what Yahweh has opened up, it's not about your talent. It's not about what you can do. It's about who you are. And it's from out of that place that you sit on the throne governing and your governance open up the gateway for those to step in and experience the things you do. So if you've ever heard Mar Margie sing, I've heard people sing much better than her. Now, she's got a great voice, and she's a beautiful young lady, and I love and honor her excessively, and she does a great job. But that's not why she is so good at worship. She's good at worship because of her level of maturity, the gateway that she opens for those in her presence, so that she can literally, through what she does, and she doesn't tell you to come, come now, let's worship together. Come on, guys. Let's praise God. Wake up. You know, focus. She just engages. She doesn't care about what you do. She doesn't. She completely shuts down. Uh, everything around her, and she begins to worship. Mm -hmm. She begins to press in. Why? Because the idea of a worship leader or someone that engages in worship is to open a gate for those in the room. Once the gates open, you go in. And it's not about singing, and it's not about raising your hands, although it's all good ideas. It's about standing before Yahweh and engaging what He gives or puts in front of you. Right? How are you guys doing? Good. It says that the Strong's Concordance uh, reference, John 4, 24, to worship in the spirit and in truth. And the word truth there is given as without canceling or hiding anything. It means that I can come with all my garbage. That's what I love about entering into the spirit. I don't go because I'm holy. I don't step into Yahweh because I'm pure. I go in because of his blood and I step in. And as I step in, he makes me pure. He begins to surround me with his glory and it shifts me. It propels me into another place, right? It goes on. It says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Yes. Now, there's many ways of doing that, right? But what does it mean to enter into his gates? You know, our natural capacity will say, well, it's to enter into the kingdom of heaven, to stand before him. But we begin to understand that when we as sons and daughters become one, when we step into each other, and I know that might not be the revelation that you carry, but when we step into each other and we become one, that, that unity that we form in Christ opens up dimensions of what he wants to release into the earth. It's, uh, Apostle Craig was talking about that lack of unity that the body of Christ had have right now that needs to change something that we need to step into and it's really in the spirit where we become one it's in that spirit realm it's that baptism of unity that we lack the understanding that we are one with each other it's not the same as me being one with my wife but we are one as the body of christ and we need to begin to look at each other in that way and it changes our perception it enhances your spirit life and it enhances what you understand regarding what yahweh is revealing and releasing to you when it comes to worship when it comes to praise and Isaiah says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They will mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be faint. It's Yahweh's desire to strengthen us. Now, I remember one of my engagements, and I've shared it before, but I was standing on the mountain of God, and I was engaging with an angelic being that was standing in front of me. There was Yeshua, and there was much others. Uh, and then, then, then something happened. There was a shift. Yeshua shifted out. And it was myself and this angel standing next to me. And all of a sudden, there was this extreme explosion in creation. Well, not in creation, within the kingdom of heaven. It was far away, but it was massive. And as it happened, it, was, it shook the entire kingdom. But everybody that was in the kingdom of heaven at that point, angels, same self, old, seven spirits, you name it, everything. Even men and women like me and you that was in the heavens at the time engaging with Yahweh. Everybody went into this cloud of fire. And I did it myself as well. And as I went in, it was like this extreme refreshing 
this reset, this renewal, this dimension of strength that was added to me. It's that place of just being in him when he exudes all of who he is into the atmosphere. And it changes and it shifts. And that's a dimension of worship that the church don't understand. Because to the church it's about the music, it's about me raising my hand, snot and tears coming running down my face, because that's true worship. But now you understand, I mean snot and tears can run down my face because I'm repenting of sin that I commit all the time. Yahweh's desire for me is not to constantly have to repent, but to stand before Him, naked in all of who you are, just giving it to Him, and engaging everything that He's given you. I've shared this many times. It's when I eat at a restaurant and I love the food, right? No matter who I tell how nice the food was, all the glory goes to the chef. I can tell the waitress, oh man, the food was phenomenal, I loved it. I can tell the hostess in front, it was phenomenal. I can go tell my friends how amazing the food was. But all I'm doing, every time I talk about this restaurant's food, is give glory to the chef. And that's what Yahweh is saying. Whenever you engage in the heavens, remind yourself that you can't take glory from me. Because you don't have the capacity in you to do that. Mm -hmm. But I will give you glory and the glory will become yours. And if you engage it, I will overshadow you with it. Right? Yeah. Another way of growing your spirit's fellowship. Right? Uh, in Proverbs it makes a statement, iron sharpens iron. So a man sharpens the countenance of his friend. Now this is, this is a very key Thing that we need to do, and I think everybody does it. You know, I mean, I do, I do it with my wife and my my. Um, I do, do it with Craig. I do it with my students. Um, I'm always busy talking to somebody about what we're doing, what we're engaging with. Um, and idea, the idea is, I do not talk to people that reject it. You know, I mean, I might, I might share it with somebody and they reject it, and then immediately I stop. I'm not going to try and make a point that's going to try and change what they perceive. I want to be in the midst of people that will encourage me, uplift me, and get me to engage what I want to engage to a greater level. That's why you want to be around the people that have the same mindset as you. If, if you find yourself shifting out of these revelations and back to the old way, move away from the people you're engaging with. Because that is affecting you negatively. You might think, well, it's not negative. It's all about Jesus, yes, but there's levels. And nobody goes from level two back to level one and think that it's progress. Right. It's not, right? Nope. And this is how everybody will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Right? Now, this is, this is something that I... I agree with when it comes to having a spiritual father or mentor. Now you can call it whatever you want to, whether you have a spiritual father or not. I have a spiritual father um, that does in a very smaller measure than myself engage with these revelations. But he is an incredible man of God. He is absolutely phenomenal. His way of presenting what I teach is different, but he is at, in the same page of many things, you know. You know, if you walk in the up here on the level that we do, I don't think so, but he's got revelation that sounds pretty much the same. And um, just his character and who he is uh, has changed my life, you know. Then I have mentors, people that I look up to, that I teach, that I trade into, that still teaches me today, that pours into me the things that I need for where I'm at. Uh, and then I have brothers like Craig and uh, Daniel and Terry and people that I can talk to that's at a similar level than me, that, um, that encourages me and lifts me up and teaches me and shows me whether I'm right or wrong or doesn't matter because there's no judgment. There's judgment to life in everything we do and engage, which is usually always pretty interesting. And of course, we also begin to understand when you're with people that's in the same mindset, we go into each other's gates. So our revelations are always very similar. You know, I listen to, I look at uh, Ian and Grant and uh, just the group of people that always teach us when they come, there's like 10 or 15 people, and they all have the same message uh, with different attributes to it and right. different understandings. Right. And I look at, uh, when we were doing the conference with myself and Terry and um, Daniel and, and, and Craig, everyone had the same understanding and the same revelation, just in a different way, projecting out of different attributes of who Yahweh is. But it was the same thing. Why? Because we are entering into the same gates. Um, and I hear Ian say this all the time. So you want to be with people that's going to be in the facility of what you believe. Because anything outside of what you believe is going to shift you back into a, 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 a level that you don't want to go back to. So it's always a good idea, right? Yes. And of course you need somebody to mentor, right? You always need somebody 
to take what you have learned and to pour it into them. That's key. So it's those three things. I've said it a million times. You need someone to mentor you, a spiritual father of some kind. My spiritual father is uh, Dr. Israel McGlucan. I love him, honor him. Um, he's been part of my life for almost 10 years, and he's changed everything I believe up to this point, you know. Um, so I do honor him. I love him. So don't ever think that I don't. He's in a phenomenal, beautiful, amazing man, him and his wife and his entire family. <clears throat> and then, of course, to have somebody that you can trust, that you can share things that you can't just share any, uh, with anybody, you know. I can, uh, I can share things with Craig that I wouldn't want to share with my spiritual father. I can share things with my spiritual father that I wouldn't want to share with anyone else. You know, I can share things with my student, with my, with my students that I won't share with anyone else. And they will share things with me that they wouldn't share with anyone else, if that makes any sense, right? It's just understanding the way that the father wants it to kind of flow out. How can one person chase a thousand of them and two put a, a merit to flight unless the rock delivers them uh, and the Lord gives them up. It's just understanding the desire of the Father to get you to that place where you understand the capacity that you carry. You know, if he says something stupid, sounds stupid to me, that one takes a thousand and two takes ten thousand, that doesn't even make sense. But if we begin to understand the capacity that we have when we work together as one, who we become as the body of Christ instead of trying to do something myself. And people come to me all the time and say, I hope you're doing something about the storm. I hope that you've already uh, destroyed it because I still see it coming. Maybe you're not doing something right. I say, well, then in that case, I'm not going to do anything. I'm going to step completely back and let it destroy whatever it wants to. Because it cannot be my responsibility as someone that teaches this and believes this to be the only one doing it. Right. You know, I cannot, it's impossible. One sun cannot stop a hurricane. You know, it is the coming together of the body of Christ, the saints, the sons in creation, knowing their function, knowing their governance, coming together in the name of Yeshua to stop it. And we don't stop it, we want to spread it out. We want to make sure that it does what it's supposed to do in creation, which is nourish and, nourishment and life. It's not to come in here and bring destruction and fear. So we have that capacity, but we have to do it together as the body of Christ, understanding who we are. Exciting, right? And of course, praying in tongues is one of the most vital keys. And, and I love this because it's not something I do like I used to do it. You know, I was told that you need to wake up at five in the morning and you need to pray for five hours before your day even starts. You know, that's the way you do it. If you want to be a great man of God, that's how you want to do it. All day long. And, and I've done that for many, many years, but I now begin to understand that it's not a language. It was never meant to be a language. It's a frequency that my spirit releases from out of my soul and my body into the atmosphere to open up the gateway so whatever I need to receive from Yahweh is opened and He can begin to pour into me. That's why things change when you pray in tongues. That's why you get excited. That's why things shift for you when you begin to see and perceive. It's almost like when I speak in tongues, it's like I can immediately see the images my spirit relates to my soul. So it's, it's, it's something we have to constantly find ourselves doing. So you can pray in tongues in English, you can pray in tongues uh, of angels, and you can pray in the tongues of men. Now, it basically says you can pray in, in, a, in a natural language, you can pray in a heavenly language, and you can pray in a language that you don't understand. But what Yahweh is wanting us to understand when it comes to this is that I can pray in tongues in English, which means I can speak in English, but I'm actually speaking in tongues. Which means I don't have an understanding or revelation of what I'm saying, but it's coming out with such speed that it is literally meant to bring life, and I can go listen to what I said again to receive the revelation. But while I'm talking as an oracle, it's flowing out, and I'm speaking in tongues in English. Um, I have the capacity to speak in tongues where no one else can understand me, but as I speak that language, my spirit man has literally pushed open the gates. And the gates that's open is available for the sons in the, in the atmosphere to go into that same place and to begin to engage with things Yahweh has. And in the same breath, to begin to encourage me, bless me, fill me, receive me receiving the revelation, the inside, the knowledge that I need to truly become at that point that as I'm engaging with Yahweh, what I need to be. If that makes sense, right? He who speaks in tongues or in a strange tongue edifies and improves himself. I love that. How are you guys doing? Good, good. So, last, a last point. 
Another key is speaking the word of God out loud. Now, now let's remind ourselves, when I say that, immediately we think of the Bible. That it's not just the Bible. Right? That means that I have a, a capacity in me to confess and speak the things that I see in the Spirit. And it will frame and form what it's meant to. It's not just quoting Scripture, but it's a good idea to quote Scripture, right? Because Scripture has great power. Because it is the voice of Yahweh, it's the mind of Christ, and I have the capacity to study it, meditate on it, and then also speak it out. My spirit relates to it and opens it up. It becomes a porthole in creation. So whenever this, the, 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 the word becomes alive, whenever someone takes the word and believes it and speak it, it opens up a gateway. But the same thing happens when I begin to understand the value in what Yahweh speaks to me and I speak it. For example, I've said this many times, as a prophet, as an oracle, the capacity of power that I carry is that whatever I speak into the atmosphere can create and form a life in its full force. The idea of me speaking out of the heart of Yahweh into creation is not so much for your ears to hear, although it is, but it's to create a porthole, a gateway for you to go into, and of course be speaking it into creation because it's a living word, it goes into the atmosphere and everybody that's in the realm can take a part of it. For example, when I quote scripture, when I engage with what Yahweh has, it is for example, Father, thank you that your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. We understand that when, 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 when um, uh, David wrote this, he wasn't talking about the Bible, right? Because there was no Bible. Right. He was talking about the word of Yahweh that's revealed in him. Yeah. The engagement that he's had with the Father when he worshiped, and Yahweh opens up the doorways for him to go in. He perceives it at another level. <sighs> Thank you that your word directs my steps, and my steps are ordered by the word of God. Now, the word of God, yeah, in Proverbs, is not the Bible. Right? I mean, it can't be because there was no Bible at that point. So it is, it's, it's talking about something else. It's the dimensions of Yahweh's word that is in the atmosphere that I can engage the spirit being. Now, remind yourself, and I always go back to the game, Telephone, Telephone. You ever played that? With a row of kids sitting in a, in a, on chairs, and someone shares a message with one kid, and he has to relate that same message to every other kid. Mm -hmm. So by the time it gets to the end, it's got nothing to do with what was said over here. Exactly. I mean, it might start off right, and then it gets to someone else on this side, hears something wrong, shares that, he hears something wrong, because that makes no sense, and he says something wrong, and eventually it gets to that, it has nothing to do with what was said on this point. So when we look at David <clears throat> sharing and talking, <clears throat> he was still at the second or third chair. <laughs> right? <clears throat> he had a dimension of the truth. He had a dimension of understanding that was, that was given down to him that is way different than what we carry today. You know, and Yahweh is saying, well, you go and engage that which is opened up so that you can receive the truth instead of the distort that we have now. You know, we've got so many different translations. We have taken the, the, the word of Yahweh and the measure that he's desired it, and we've distorted it to what we want. Now, I don't know the Bible, the, the church doesn't like me saying that, but that's the truth. And Yahweh's, in Yahweh's defense, did he really truly want the book? You know, that's something we can go figure out for ourselves. But my personal opinion, no, he didn't want the book. We decided through Constantine that it's a good idea to have a book because every other religion has a book, and we just want to be another religion. It's to dumb us down and to break the power of Yahweh in its full capacity. Because now we have a book, and if God takes, uh, speaks out of the living, living word, or he speaks out of the spoken word, and he doesn't only speak out of that which is written, then it can't be God because we placed him in a box. Exactly. And of course, that's not Yahweh's desire. That's not his heartbeat, right? He wants us to understand. Once we step into the word, everything unfolds because we're stepping into the truth, if that makes sense. Thank you, Lord, that I do not stay from the left, uh, stay from the left or from the right, because you are leading me. Shway, sorry, stray. That's what I say. <laughs> stray. Help me, Jesus. And again, that's something I can meditate on. It's Yahweh's desire for me to know what my scroll is. 
right? I'm going to sway to the left and I'm going to sway to the right if I don't know what to do. If I'm just randomly choosing things that sounds good or that looks good or someone has said something and my mentor says, well, it's a good idea for you to be in a youth ministry because of what you look like. And I'm thinking, well, I've got no desire to be in a youth ministry. I've never, ever wanted to be in a youth ministry. It's just never been my passion. Um, why would I want to do youth ministry? Because you think I should do youth ministry. I want to submit to you, but I don't feel that that's what God has for me. I have to know what Yahweh said about me. I have to know what's good and what's right for me because when I do what I have to do, it might not be what they had in mind. It might not be what they wanted me to do. But when I do what Yahweh told me to do, I fall in line with Him and He begins to open up everything and revelation falls into place. That's always a good idea. God made the statement and said, The Most High does not dwell in temples made by hands. God dwells in the words that you have spoken that create an atmosphere for him to dwell in. Now, in that scripture, that's uh, Acts 7, 48. Remind yourself that the Holy Spirit, Ruach Kadesh, his housing is your body. Right? Not your soul, not your body, not your, not your soul, not your spirit, your body is his housing. And that's where he dwells. But in the same breath, his desire is to bring you to a place where you understand how powerful it is to have him live in you. And I was trying to make this expression this morning because uh, bait represents the house. And what I love about the bait is it also represents duality in oneness or uh, duality in, in, in bringing things together. It's the understanding that, that, that Yeshua lives in me, I am the house, but in the same breath I live in him. And it's the understanding of what it takes for all of Yahweh to live in all of who I am and the capacity of His glory that I then am consumed in. And then what does it mean for me as Gustav LaRue, body, soul, spirit, to live inside of all of who He is in the kingdom of heaven and understand that glory and the overshadowing power and the fullness that comes with that understanding and what it means to truly sit in Him and have Him wash all of who He is over me. It is meant and designed to change all of who I am. Right? That's why it says, delight yourself and he will give you the desires and secret petitions of your heart. Now, at this point in your walk with Yahweh, your secret desire, your, your desires and your secret petitions of your heart becomes his. Now, everything of you, who you are is shifted because I've given him lordship. I'm seated in Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ that lives in me. The life I now live, I live by His face, and I'm seated in the kingdom of heaven. I'm coming out of a whole different realm. He gives me a new desire. He gives me uh, new secret petitions in my heart. Things I didn't even know I wanted, I all of a sudden want. Because He's pouring into me all of who He is, so that my character can be His character. My personality is mixed with that character of Yahweh, and I become that unique, authentic me that He's always wanted me to be. So that I can breathe into creation and establish or things that's written on my scroll for all of that to come into place and be what it's supposed to be. That's exciting, right? Yes, indeed. So the key is here, and I'm going to close with this. For you to see, you have to understand that there's only one place where you perceive or see, and that is on the inside of you, on the inside of your brain. Everyone, including Yeshua, sees from one place or screen, and that's in your brain. Images, whether natural or, sp or spirit, are perceived from out of one screen. Your uh, you, your brain, only perceives or store or validates what you train to validate. Believing is a requirement to see. You uh, you will only see uh, what you believe or what you value. Seeing in the spirit is a choice and not a gift, right? Then you want to understand this. And when it comes to growing your spirit, the first thing is the the importance of you constantly meditating on the things of Yahweh, meditating on the spirit realm, meditating on what Yahweh shows and reveals to you. Now, the second key is to build a strong spirit in worship. That is understanding the new level that Yahweh is taking us to in worship and adoration. It's not the same as what it was. It can start off the same. It doesn't start off the same for me anymore. I cannot worship like I used to. And I know it sounds like, well, that's the only way I know. Well, let's shift out of that place. There's better ways. There's more intense places. Now, uh, that place could be a starting for some because I know some of my sons and daughters, some of my students, they just can't because of, of physical ailments, physical problems. They can't sit still. They have to move around. Otherwise, the pain is overbearing. So you, in this situation, is going to have to find another way of engaging, right? But the key is to do it the way the Yahweh has opened up for us. Um, it's, another way is fellowship. Right? Fellowship. Have the same like mind that's around you all the time. Constantly praying tongues, 
find yourself always speaking the word out loud, but not just the word as we perceive it, that which we study, which is written in our Bible, but also speaking what Yahweh is placing in your heart, confessing, throwing out what you have in your heart, even if it's crazy and it sounds weird. No one has to be around you, but you're speaking it into the atmosphere. And of course, the idea of all of this, as we consistently do it, my spirit grows, my spirit goes back into that realm where it walks on its ancient path and has the knowledge that it needs to carry the things that my soul and my body needs to have in creation. Exciting, right? Yes. Father, we just want to thank you and praise you. And as we come to this journey, Father, where we realize that we need more of you, we need to grow more, Father, we need to have more maturity, we need to perceive and understand and have revelation of more of the things that you're revealing and releasing to us, I ask, Father, that we will begin to see, that we will begin to understand how to go deeper and wider and higher into who you are. Let's begin to understand the value of who we are as spirit beings in the atmosphere. Let's understand the value of who we are as spirits within the kingdom of heaven. Who we are, Father, as body, soul, spirit. This shift that needs to take place in the way we think, the way we perceive, even, <coughs> <coughs> even just in the way we carry ourselves as sons on the side of the veil. Let's go in to a deeper place with you. Let's allow all of who you are to resonate inside of us. So the change that's needed for us to become what we need to be can be fluent. Father, we are excited and we ask in the name of Yeshua that you'll begin to open our eyes so we can go to places that you desire for us to go to and begin to do the things in creation that needs to be done to bring all things back into the place and the measure that you've desired for it to be. Father, we love you, we praise you, we thank you in the name of Yeshua. Amen.